Armando Hasurugan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan. Please like. And here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including your artworks, or send them to me, please. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. Continuing on with the immunology map, we're looking at part three. And so just revising from the very first immunology map, uh, the different leukocytes, the immature and the precursors, arise from the bone marrow. And they arise from the bone, the cells within the bone marrow known as the pluripotent stem cells. So the pluripotent stem cells here give rise to different types of leukocytes, immature or precursors, or even mature ones. And these different leukocytes will then leave the bone marrow into the bloodstream, where they will travel to and migrate to specific tissues, organs, or they will just circulate uh, throughout the body, such as the granulocytes. Um, an example of this is that the um, T cell precursor, the lymphoid precursor, will travel to the thymus to become mature. Uh, the immature B cell will travel to the lymph node to become activated. And then in part two, we looked at the different organs um, and tissues uh, uh, within the immune system and how the different leukocytes migrate or move into these different tissues. The liver, as we have learned, uh, produces important substances for the immune system, such as the complement proteins, which are important in the innate immune system. And then we saw how the some, some types of uh, leukocytes, such as mast cells and macrophages and dendritic cells, move into tissues, such as tissues underneath our skin. And they make up the innate immune cells because they're the, they're the first line of defense, you can say. And then we stopped where the lymphoid precursor, or we can even now say the T cell precursor, uh, migrates into the thymus here. And this is where we stopped. So in this video, we'll actually see what happens to this T cell precursor. Of course, because this is a T cell precursor, it will obviously become a T cell. However, we looked at the lymphoid precursor when it entered the thymus. And so this lymphoid precursor, it can be programmed, depending on how it was programmed, it can become a number of different types of leukocytes, including a natural killer cell. But for now, we are just assuming that this lymphoid precursor will become a T cell. So we just wrote this up as T cell precursor. So in this video, we're going to look at the development of T cell from the T cell precursor, from the lymphoid precursor. So we start off with the T cell precursor. The T cell precursor expresses no sign of being an actual T cell. A T cell precursor in the thymus will become either a CD8 T cell or a CD4 T cell. A CD8 and CD4 basically means the type of receptor it will have or it will express. It will express a CD8 receptor or it will express a CD4 receptor. In a T cell precursor stage, it expresses none of these. So we write this T cell precursor as CD8 negative and CD4 negative, meaning it contains no receptors, uh, no T cell receptor CD8 and no T cell receptor CD4. However, in the thymus, the T cell precursor will, became, will become a naive T cell, which will then express both CD4 and CD8 receptors. And so we write this as CD4 plus and CD8 plus because it expresses both of them. Now this naive T cell, which expresses both CD4 and CD8 co-receptors, can then become specifically either a naive T cell, which only expresses a CD8 co-receptor, or a naive T cell, which specifically expresses a CD4 co-receptor. So we write this as a CD8 cell or a CD4 cell. So again, this T cell precursor will become either a naive T cell CD8 or naive T cell CD4. You might have remembered me saying that a CD4 cell is a T helper cell and that a CD8 cell is a T killer cell. This is true in a way, but because these cells are CD4 and CD8 cells here in the thymus are still naive, they are still just CD4 and CD8 and they, they can become uh, different types of cells later on once activated. 
However, generally, a CD4 cell will become um, a T helper cell, and generally, a CD8 cell will become a T killer cell once activated. And so in the thymus, we saw that a T cell precursor will give rise to either a CD8 naive T cell or a CD4 naive T cell. Now let's look at the immunology map and see how this T cell development uh, occurs in a bit more detail. So this is where we last stopped off, where the cells such as the monocyte, dendritic cell, immature dendritic cell, and the lymphoid pre pre precursor cell uh, migrates or moves into the thymus. Let's zoom into this thymus section here. Now this is just a simplified diagram of the, uh, the inner works of the thymus. Uh, the thymus consists of the outer cortex um, and the inner medulla. And the cortico-medullary junction is what separates the cortex with the medulla. Surrounding uh, regions within the thymus are known as a capsule. Now within the medulla we, and cortex, we have some cells such as in the medulla, we have immature dendritic cells. And also we have blood vessels, uh, both in the medulla and in the cortex, to bring the, the, the cells into the thymus, essentially. And also in the medulla, we, we, we find what's called the thymic epithelial cells, which are important uh, for the development of T cells. In this video, I'm not going to include the chemical signals involved in the development of the T cell. I'm just going to explain the overview um, or the overall picture of how uh, CD4 and CD8 T cells, uh, naive T cells develop. 